Welcome to another episode of Project Dirty Willy. In this episode, we're going to show you how to make your factory alarm work a little bit better without your top. This is most likely going to be a relatively long video because I'm going to try to explain as much as I can because this isn't really all that difficult. It just requires a lot of steps to do this. And basically what we're doing is we're taking this little proximity sensor and we're going to wire it into the factory alarm system of your Jeep. Um, if you want to find out that if you have a factory alarm in your Jeep, um, I can't really show you right now because I have the doors and stuff off. Uh, basically, you know, hit your lock button to where your horn honks and then uh, have one of your windows cracked or something like that and reach in, open the door from the inside. If the horn starts honking, then you have an alarm system, not just a keyless entry. Because uh, a lot of people think just because they have a key fob that they can hit lock and unlock, they think that they have a factory alarm system. Um, and I use the term factory alarm system pretty loosely because it's not really an alarm. Uh, like I said, the only thing it the only thing that'll really set it off is if somebody opens one of the doors or opens the gate. Um, if somebody comes up and shakes the vehicle and stuff like that, it's not going to go off because it doesn't have a shock sensor or anything like that. You can add all of this kind of stuff to the OE alarm system and uh, a lot of people just don't know about that. So I'm going to show you today how to add a proximity sensor to the factory alarm and what that will do is allow you to have your top off and your doors off and you can adjust this and basically if someone were to reach inside the jeep it would set off your factory alarm system here's all the electronics that we're going to be using we're going to use a dual zone motion sensor a five pin relay some connectors a t-tap and a tiny little micro switch so i'm going to get the camera moved around and stuff and uh Try to show you all the steps that I can. And like I said, this isn't really that difficult. It just has a lot of steps. So you, you may have to watch through the video a couple times, uh, but just, just watch and kind of pay attention to little steps here and there. Because like I said, it's, it's not really, really hard. It's just, you're gonna see a lot of information. You're gonna be like, man, I have to do that and I have to do that. It's not that bad. It's just gonna take a while. There are a few different ways that you can do this. Uh, I'm just trying to show a way that pretty much anybody can do without having to do certain things, uh, like having to remove the four-wheel drive shifter, your transfer case shifter knob, uh, because that, that can be kind of a chore. Um, you have to exert a lot of force upward to pull them off. It can be a pain. Um, you can find videos on how to do that. I did a video on switching to these knobs, but I just broke the old knobs off because I wasn't gonna use the factory knobs again. But I'm gonna try to do it without having to remove this and not removing the entire console because in order to remove the console, you have to remove this knob here. One of the first steps is gonna be take out the passenger seat. And you may think, man, I'm not even gonna mess with this because I gotta take out the, the seat. It's, it's actually not that hard. I mean, there's only four bolts. And, and this is another step that I guess you really don't have to do, but it gives you a lot more room. Uh, trust me, if you were to do it without taking out the seat, um, and then if you were to do it again with taking the seat out, you'd be like, oh, wow, this is so much easier with taking the seat out. And I'm just using a little pick to move these little plastic pieces out of the way. And then I'm taking an 18 millimeter socket and my impact gun. You could just use a ratchet. I'm gonna remove the bolts. Then we're gonna tilt the seat forward and slide it all the way up so we can get to the back bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and take out my rear liner. Same thing back here. Just pop that up. And before taking the seat out, there is a harness in here. It's this yellow harness. It'll have the red safety tab that you have to pull back then you can squeeze and sometimes that'll happen it'll come off of its little base so you might have to use two hands
and just separate that harness. With the bolts out and the harness unplugged, now you can just lift your seat out. These are a little bit heavy. Then once your seat's out and uh, you can kind of see how dirty everything is underneath your seats, you can see this little plastic piece here. Um, just start unscrewing it. And then it'll come off and you can move your carpet out of the way and see even more dirt that you have inside your Jeep. And you're basically just trying to get to this big plug right here. You're gonna unplug it and then pull these little retainers off and you're just basically wanting to give yourself some slack on this harness. Now that you've got plenty of room, you can sit in here and you're gonna to wanna to remove this bottom panel and yours may look different than mine because this is a switch panel that I've installed. But it pops out from the top and then lifts. And while you have that, you can pull your transfer case back a little bit so you can get this free. And if you don't have a switch panel, then most likely you can get your panel all the way out of the way. I'm gonna leave mine hooked up for the time being. And then the next step is gonna to be to get under here and you'll notice this is two layers. You just wanna get a hold of the outer layer, kind of pop up a little bit, grab up here by the cup holder, pop this up, pull your emergency brake back as far as you can. And just get this to where it's loose. Now that you have that loose, you're gonna take a T30 Torx bit, lift this up, and you see your little Torx bit here. Remove that, and then you notice you have another one back here. Take it out too. And you'll have two more just like that on the other side. Then I'm gonna lift up on this piece of trim, and I'm gonna stick a light under here, and hopefully, you'll be able to see down in here. I'll try to zoom you in. That little gray plug right there. You wanna get it and it has a little tab that you can lift up on. You can use your finger or that pick. I'm sorry, you can't see what I'm doing, but you lift up on it. There, I've got it unlocked, but you'll lift up on it and it'll unlock and then you can slide it out and flip it over and you can see where you can disconnect it. And again, sorry, you can't see what I'm doing here, but once you have your hands in here, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. There you go, if you can see, I've got that disconnected now. That's for your USB and stuff like that if you have it inside of your glove box or, well, your console, not your glove box. Now that you have this piece loose and you've taken out the four T30 Torx, the two in the front and the two in the rear, you have your seat out, of course, and you have this wire loosened up so you have enough slack. You have your cable on the inside here that's unplugged for your USB and uh, your power. Now you can actually lift your console up and have access to the underside here. Um, if you have uh, shifter knobs like I do that are easy to come off, then it's easy just to pull the whole console out. Uh, but if, you're, if you have the factory ones, they're not as easy to take off. And if you don't wanna go through the process of taking those off, this is uh, kind of an alternative. That's why I'm doing it like this. So um, pretty much anybody can try to do this. And uh, believe it or not, I, I would consider this the hard part. It's the, you know, getting in here and unsnapping stuff. The easy part is coming up now where we're gonna do the wiring. And uh, if you just follow the wiring, the wiring's relatively simple. Um, and the reason why you wanna get back here is because there's actually a spot right here, at least on a 2015 two-door, that is just big enough for this little module, the uh, proximity sensor. And you want it to be somewhat in the center of your vehicle. So if you have a four door, I mean, I don't know how much further off center this would be. 
but it says at least in the instructions for the module that you want it somewhat centered in the vehicle. And then you could also put something underneath here to hold this up. Now I want to talk about the wiring of this. Uh, when it comes to your relay, you're going to need a specific relay. You're going to need a five pin relay, just like this. Pretty standard, but the reason why I say you're going to need that because you have your mini relays and they actually only have four pins and your other relays that only have four pins. We need the five pin. What we're going to do is tap into multiple sources throughout the vehicle in order to make this work with the factory alarm system. I'm going to try to explain this to where it's not too complicated. Um, on the back of the relays, you're going to have a series of numbers for each pin. So say this pin here is number 85. That's actually going to go to a ground. And then you have this pin here, which is pin 30. And we're going to want to tap in somewhere where we can have constant power for that. We want that to have power all of the time, even when the vehicle's off. This pin here is pin 86. And this pin, we're going to tap into a source that comes on when the vehicle is on. So it's a switched source that only has power when you turn the key of the vehicle. And this pin here is pin 87. We're actually not going to use pin 87. Uh, for anybody that's familiar with relays is going to think that's kind of odd that we're not using pin 87 because that's normally the pin that you would hook your accessories to. Um, basically, you have power and ground here that are coming in, and then you have a coil or trigger wire, and when it gets power, it connects and sends power out of pin 87. Well, we're not using pin 87, we're gonna use pin 87A in the middle. What pin 87A does is actually, when you have ground and power, you have power coming out of pin 87A all the time until you send power to pin 86, which then takes the power away from 87A and sends it to 87. The reason why we want to use pin 87A for our module here, this is the wiring for it, is we want the module to have power when the vehicle is off. So when the vehicle is off, there's no connection to this pin, so there's power coming through here. We don't want the module functioning while the vehicle is running. We don't want the alarm or anything going on while the vehicle is running. So when you turn the key on and you have the vehicle running, it turns on pin 86 and starts sending power out of 87, which we're no longer using, but it will also take away power from pin 87A, which will be going to the module. And with this setup, there are a few small little Little issues that you may have to, to get used to or look over. Um, there's a reason for the switch that kind of helps get rid of some of these issues. What we'll be doing is tying into the alarm wire for the rear gate. We won't be tying in for the doors or anything because the doors won't be attached or anything like that. So we will have the wire for the gate tapped in for the module. And what that will cause is your dash to light up and say that your gate is open or your dome light could come on. That's why we're using the relay so that while you, you have the key in the ignition and it's started or you're driving, there's no longer power sent to this module. So when you're driving down the road, your dome light doesn't come on and you know your, your gate ajar indicator doesn't come on or anything like that. But if you're setting in place in the vehicle and you don't have the keys in the ignition, kind of like right now, um, if you're working on the vehicle, uh, the, the sensor would actually be working and it would send a signal kind of telling the Jeep that the gate is open and sometimes your dome light will come on. So as you're moving around in the vehicle, your dome light will keep coming on and stuff like that. So you have your little micro switch that you want to kind of hide somewhere because this ultimately disarms the system. So if you're going to be setting in the vehicle without the keys in it, without it running and doing some work on it, you can turn this on and off or say during the seasons when you have the top on and the doors on and you don't want the motion sensor, you can also shut it off and it completely disables this sensor. But you want to put this somewhere where you and only you know where it's at because somebody could actually disable your alarm system. So I'll, I'll be showing you how to wire it, but I won't show you exactly where I'm putting it. 
I'll show what I'm talking about with the uh, with the dome light and stuff coming on once we have this all wired in. But um, now that we have everything taken out and the center console loose to where we can get underneath it, I'm going to show you where we need to actually tap into some wires. And to do that, we're going to use T-taps. The first connection that we're going to want to make is a constant power from either you can you can get this directly from the battery or from the fuse box. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a constant line ran into the Jeep already for my switch panel. So I'm just going to tap into that. But for, for everybody else, you would either run, you know, a line directly from the battery, um, from your fuse box, anywhere that has power all of the time, whether the key is on or off. And that line is where you will want to put this switch. This switch will be able to take away the power coming to the module, whether the vehicle is on or off. So for your first wire, as I said, is going to be a 12 volt positive, and you can either get that from the battery or the fuse box. I already have a location for mine, so I'll show you that, but just keep in mind that you'll have to find somewhere different. I have found a spot for the ground, and I have also found the trigger wire or um, gate ajar wire, whichever you would like to call it. Um, I'll show you that, where that's located. I'm not 100% sure if this is the same for all of the JKs, but this is a 2015 and the wire is actually purple with an orange stripe. If uh, you don't know exactly what color your wire is for the gate, easiest thing to do here is go to the back of the Jeep, open up the gate and pull this panel off and go through and you can find your wire here. Okay, over here on the passenger side, I'm going to try to show you where I am going to tap into the wire for the gate. If you can see way up in here, the wire that I have pulled out is purple with an orange stripe. Let me zoom out and try to give you an idea of where you're looking. If you were sitting in the passenger seat, off to your right side, up inside there, is where you'll find that wire. I'm going to go ahead and put a T-tap on there. The next wire we need to tap into is underneath the steering column, and it's behind this panel here. This panel just pops out. The next wire is from this plug right here. I'm going to see, let me see if I can separate the wires out from this loom. That pink wire with the white stripe, um, it's actually got a little nick in it somehow already. But that will be your switched power. That will be the wire that goes to pin 86 on your relay. I'll actually probably remove this panel here. So now we're tapped in for pin 86 with this pink and white wire. We have our power ran from the battery, which, well, I've got mine ran from my switch panel for pin 30. And then now I'm going to show you where we're going to get ground for pin 85. Back over on the passenger side, you will notice that there is a single ground strap here. We are going to take off that nut and we're going to add our ground there and again that will run to pin number 85 on the relay Once you've got all your wires here, and if you want to kind of check your progress to make sure that you're still on the right you know, route, take your purple wire, which is attached to the trigger for your gate, and touch it to a ground, which I'm going to touch it to a ground down here where you can't see. But look over here on the gauges, and you should see the gate icon light up. So that means you're going the right direction. Now we need to start making some sense of all these wires. Uh, try to move 
a bunch out of the way. And I want to show you just under here, this metal plate. There's a hole in it right here, just off camera that you can't see. And that's going to allow us to attach our relay. Something like that. So we can start making our connections, trimming our wires and making our connections to right here. I want to show you where I've placed the module. There's a spot right in here where it fits. You don't want to secure it yet because it does have a sensitivity adjustment. So once we get it set up, we're going to have to adjust how sensitive it is. And I've already cut the wire for it to length. And then now I'm going to get this set up and show you how to wire all of it. Okay, hopefully you can see everything okay. I've went ahead and pulled our module out. I've got the wires for it, and we're gonna split them. There's four wires on here. There's a blue, a green, a black, and a red. We're not gonna be using the green. The green is a warning. It's like a, they call it the first stage, which is uh, normally just a chirp. And then the blue is the second stage. That's what we're gonna be using is the blue. Okay, we've put ends on everything. We have connected the blue wire from the module to the purple wire that goes to the gate. We have our pink wire that goes over to the pink wire with the white stripe beside the steering column. That is the switched power. We have our red that is our constant power and our black that is a ground, which I have taken the ground for the relay and the ground for the module and put together. Now we're going to start plugging things into the relay. We need to look on the bottom of the relay and find pin number 30. And that is our red wire, which is constant power. Pin number 85, which is ground. Pin 87A is going to be the power to the module. I'm not sure if you can see anything I'm doing here. And then pin 86 is our pink wire, which is our switched power. Technically, nothing should happen at this point because I have the little switch that I wired in turned off. You want to hide that little switch to where nobody knows where it is, and you want that switch on your constant red wire. Now that everything is hooked up, you have to adjust it, and I've pretty much got it adjusted. Um, plan on spending quite a bit of time doing the adjustment on this, because um, it is a little touchy. Um, I will give you a little bit of a tip. If you take out the passenger seat like I did during your installation, do your adjustments and do your testing over on the driver's side. Um, basically get it set up to where it goes off where you want it, you know, how far and when you reach how, you know, when it goes off basically on the driver's side. And don't worry about the passenger side really until you put the seat back in. Because I went back and forth, back and forth and just couldn't figure it out because the driver's side worked great. Um, I could walk by it, nothing. Until I reached in and actually moved around, then it would go off. But if I came around to the passenger side, it would go off even if I was a foot or two feet away. Like I didn't even have to be close to the Jeep and it would go off. And uh, it makes sense because the seat wasn't in here. Put the seat in and it works pretty much the same as the driver. It does a good job at covering, you know, the inner cabin here and the back seat. Um, it doesn't really get anything further back. You can keep adjusting the sensitivity on it and possibly get it to cover the back, but then you're, it's going to be going off when people walk past it because it basically makes a big circle. Um, so the more sensitive you make it, the bigger your circle. So you get a big circle in here, but if you make your circle big enough to reach all the way to the back, it's going to be sticking way, way out to the sides. 
So it's all put back together. And I guess I'll show you a little demonstration. Okay, what I'm gonna do is lock the Jeep. And as you can see, I've got some tools and stuff sitting in the back seat. Um, this isn't really meant for, you know, protecting stuff like that, you know, because with your top and your doors off and stuff, you shouldn't really have anything valuable in there anyway. But, you know, it's still nice to know that you have some form of protection if someone was to get in your Jeep and just start messing around with stuff. Because, I mean, you know, even if it's not stuff of value, people steal anything. I mean, people will steal your first aid kit off the, you know, the, out of the back of your Jeep. They'll steal your band-aids. They'll steal anything. But now I'm going to go up and I'm going to grab one of these tools out of the back seat. So that's kind of how that works. Now I'll show you here on the front seat. Again, I'm going to lock it and so that you don't think that I'm hitting any buttons, I'll stick that in there. And the reason why it hasn't gone off yet is once you arm the alarm of your Jeep, I think it's a 14 or a 15 second wait. Like now, um, you can tell by the blinking light on your dash. So now I'm just going to walk up and I'm going to get in the Jeep. And that's pretty much how that works. You can adjust the sensitivity on it. You can make it, you know, a little bit harder for it to go off. I've got it to where you pretty much have to get it. You know, you have to get in here. Um, it's not like if you just walk past it, I don't want that. Uh, I'm going to have to test this out, you know, like on a really windy day or something, park somewhere and see if, you know, I don't think it's sensitive enough for like if a leaf or something blows through. Um, so that's not an issue. Uh, the other issue that I was mentioning, the reason why you have to have the switch is because if you're sitting here, like the gate light just came on and the uh, dome light came on, it's because the sensor is actually still working right now. But once you have the key in the ignition and turned, I make sure there's nothing on the radio so I don't get any copyright. Once you've got your key on, it turns on that relay which in turn cuts off the power to that module. That's why we used the opposite pin than we normally do. We use the A pin rather than the other. But now you can move around in here and stuff. So when you're driving, it doesn't do it. But if you were to shut it off and I move around, it comes up on the, the dash. So if you're sitting here working on something and you don't want your dome light to keep coming on and stuff like that, um, you can use your switch wherever you put your switch, you know, whether you, you know, you make a spot for it in the console or, you know, see there's that and the, the dome light just came back on. Um, or if you put it, you know, hidden back here, there's all kinds of places you can put the switch. That's why I showed that little tiny mini switch. So like I said in the beginning, um, it, it just, it, it might look hard, but it's actually really not. Um, just watch through the video, you know, go back and, and go over a couple spots. And, and once you get started, you'll realize that it's actually not really that hard. Um, it's, it's just really time consuming. I'm sorry if this video ran a little bit long. Um, I really wanted to show as much as I could for people to do this because I thought this was something really interesting and something that people would be interested in doing on their own Jeeps. Uh, so hopefully I gave you enough information to where you could do this yourself. Like I said, the hardest part is just taking things apart. Um, and you can see that you could do it without removing the console. You could just lift the console a little bit. So that's how you install a proximity sensor. You saw I moved and then just lit up because I still have the switch on. Again, that's what that switch is for. Um, but yeah, that's how you install a proximity sensor or a motion sensor um, into your factory, your OEM alarm system if you have one. And uh, just remember, it's no replacement for, you know, keeping valuable stuff out of your rig if your doorless and topless and stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, you actually learned a little bit from it. So um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think if, uh, if you're actually, if you're gonna try this, uh, if you think that it's something uh, pretty easy and let me know how I did on showing you how to do it because your feedback actually helps a lot when it comes to making new videos because I know I end up skipping over some stuff or you know I breeze through something because to me I think it's easy and I, I, I don't stop to think that you know, okay, maybe that part's not easy to someone else, you know. 
So uh, just let me know what you think, and uh, it'll just help me make a little bit better video for the next time. So that's pretty much it for this episode of Project Dirty Willy. Um, I'm going to try to keep going with uh, Project Dirty Willy here and doing things that are uh, more into the getting your Jeep ready for topless weather, you know, like this. And uh, there, there'll be some other stuff coming up. So, uh, yeah, make sure to stay tuned for that. If you like this episode, make sure to hit like. Um, if you're new to my channel or you came across this and you're not one of my subscribers, make sure to go into my channel, check out a couple videos. If uh, you find a video that you like, make sure to hit the like button. If you have something to say, leave it down in the comments. And if you find a couple videos that you like, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.